welcome to Vixens Live. My name's Clint Stanaway, Bianca Chatfield alongside me. Hey, B. So great to have you back, Clint. I Thank was you. worried that you'd left me and that you weren't coming back to Vixens Just Live. Just went walkabout for a week. Okay, but you're back with us. <laughs> Couldn't go on holiday, um, of course, because no. we're in lockdown. And a big uh, hello to all our fans at home. If you're in lockdown, we're thinking of you, of course. We're in lockdown too. We're able to bring you this uh, real treat of a show, Vixens Live, with thanks to Nissan this week. And how good it was that all the netball we had last week, I, I think round five, to be honest, was one of my favourites that we've seen so far. So many close games, but also the Vixens getting and their a win. first win. Woohoo! What a win it was as well. <laughs> We must, though, because the Vixens are not in Melbourne, we do get to cross live to one of the Vixens players. You've got someone special for us? We do. Someone who I know can often be quite amusing, quite yeah. funny, quite quirky. I know. She might Simone have... Simone McInnes. Uh, <laughs> no, not Simone oh. this week. We will get Simone at oh, okay. one stage. But this player I got to play with as well, and she's been walking around with a sore hand, and oh. we thought we'd better go straight to Emily Mannix live up on the sunny coast. Over to you, Emily. Welcome to Vixens Live. Hello, thanks for having me. I mean, I would love to be in the studio with you two, but instead I am uh, looking over the ocean from my room, um, which is quite lovely. Very lucky to Okay, that's all here, we've got time for. Yeah, all right. Um, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and now that you're showing off that hand brace oh, yeah. that you've got on, talk us through the injury. How's it feeling? Pretty good. Um, I've been in the splint for a couple of weeks and I'm ready to chuck it over the, um, the edge of my balcony. But um, look, it's going all right. I'm feeling all right. It's just a frustrating one to have. But luckily, I'm able to still do everything on court. I've been doing some footwork with Simone without the ball, obviously. She did actually piff the ball at me the other day accidentally. <laughs> um, and I had to quickly dodge it. Um, but, yeah, all was going well. All in the rehab, the Simone McGuinness, uh, yeah. McGuinness dart pass. Hey, um, I want to ask you about the win. Were, there, were you allowed to give out a few high fives of that, um, that injury because it was a great win on the weekend, Em? It was. And, it, I mean, we did celebrate quite hard. Um, many people probably thought that we won the grand final. Um, and I think... You know, we've been giving it to Maloney a bit because she actually did celebrate harder than she did last year after <laughs> we won. Um, but it really meant a lot to the group and obviously not having won a game yet and then having such a close one against the Firebirds and everyone really playing their role really well and contributing to that success at the end. Me um, obviously contributing on the sidelines as assistant uh, defensive coach um, was good. And, yeah, we're all so happy to get that win. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that round five game against the Firebirds. It was pretty intense, especially in that last 40 seconds of the game. What were you thinking on the sidelines? Were you nervous? Were you confident? How did you go sitting through that? Um, I was a bit nervous. I. You know, obviously being on the sidelines is hard enough, but having a game like that where it's up and down and coming down to the wire, and I mean, I don't even know what happened in that last minute. There was so so much going on. I was up and down, I was jumping, I was clapping a bit too hard, um, <laughs> celebrating a bit prematurely, and then I think Gabby got that intercept and um, it looked like we were down and out, but then Katie came out. There I've been telling is. Katie. Yep. Right all on day. cue. She's doing it right now. They come now. out <laughs> and take one of those ripper intercepts, and she left it to the very last minute, or less than a minute, to get that. And um, yeah, with Rani shooting that two pointer, um, she was our saviour at the end there. So there's, <laughs> there's a breakdown of the scores, um, how it all panned out. Obviously, a two goal win in the end to the Vixens. Um, a nice visit back to the scene of the grand final um, just a few months ago. But uh, I want to ask you about Rani because it was She's nothing, the talk of the town here nothing, in Melbourne. It was nothing short of extraordinary. Actually, we had her on the news the other day. Gee, can she talk as yeah, well? I know. She's the <laughs> ultimate professional. They interviewed her at halftime during the game and it was like she's been playing for 10 years. Seasoned veteran. Yeah, didn't skip a beat. Has she been up there since the game? And surely that just must have been a huge highlight for her to be able to step out and court. I mean, the pressure of starting, let alone the pressure of shooting that super shot right at the end that MJ put down for her to take. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> And we were cracking up about that. I asked MJ after the game, MJ, the contact was on you. You loved the glory. Why did you not shoot that last shot? And she, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. And, yeah, so that was quite funny. I think she was worried that if she missed it, no one would like her anymore. So she's, she's handed it over to Rani um, and she was able to get that last shot in. But 
credit to Rani. She um, she had hot hands all day, and to for her to be able to come on, start the game, and play like she did, um, I know she is, but she should be very proud of herself. And she's been getting a lot of love, obviously obviously from back home and um, I've seen her on her phone a lot responding to a lot of messages so um, yeah really happy for her after a, a hard couple of years obviously doing an ACL at the end of 2018 and not being able to play 2019 and then obviously last year with COVID not being able to play back in Victoria um, for her to be able to come out and, and play like she did um, yeah it was a credit to her and, and love having her around at the moment. So taking that last shot Em, I mean what does that say about her, her mentality, the sort of athlete she is, the fact that she's she's willing to step up to the yeah. plate in a, in a big moment like that and, and what will this do for her confidence do you think? Yeah and I think I've seen Rani you know come up through the ranks a little bit of you know the Netball Vic pathway and she's always just had that confidence to turn and shoot from anywhere and if she misses it you know, she gets on with things as well. So I think it's really great to see her just have the confidence to turn and shoot. And obviously MJ there loves a rebound and specky <laughs> over whoever. Um, so she's there to back her up. Um, but yeah, I love seeing her just turn and shoot. It's really good to see. Well, while we're still talking about that game, we need to also pump up the defence end because Katie Ann Dehaney has been in hot form as well. She took some great intercepts, especially the timing of those intercepts. Has she really grown in confidence now that she's been out there a little bit more each game? I know that's probably <laughs> not, not <laughs> ideal because you're off the court. But for Katie Ann, I think she's just really stepped up and been able to pick those moments when to contest the ball. Yeah, definitely. And that's something Katie is so good at is that contesting. She's got those long, long arms, um, probably double the length of mine, and she <laughs> can really use them to advantage. So it's just really getting her to be that aggressive, you know, player back there, which she does have. Um, I know at training she's always, her and MJ have a bit of biff on court. Um, so it's just getting that out of her in, in matches. And I think that's coming each week. And She's, you know, she's been with us at the Vixens for five years now. So she's actually, you know, quite experienced in what it takes to be out there. And she's had a lot of opportunities as well. Um, obviously, before my injury, we were sort of, I guess, sharing that role a little bit and, and bouncing off each other a little bit um, in matches. So, yeah, it's really good to see her come out there and, and have that confidence and take a few of those ripper um, intercepts on the weekend as well, which she's been working on. Uh, one more about last weekend before we, I guess, look forward. Em. I just want to ask you, because this is the win that you craved. I mean, it was really coming, it was really building, and it's great reward for effort. So uh, what, are you, what, what have you been speaking about um, in the wake of that victory? Yeah, I think we'd sort of been going on each week the same things, and it's just about those basic skills. And we'd obviously made in the previous matches a lot of errors and unforced errors and that was something that we were really looking at at training in just those ball skills and I know Bianca you know Simone just loves those basic skills <laughs> and the hard work rate of just doing your job and um, that's something that we just sort of it was quite repetitive each week you know we'd had a few hard losses and each week we were sort of working on the same things but we weren't able to actually then the next week go out and and do it and I think the game against the Firebirds, we actually were able to go out and, and pick up on some of those things that have been letting us down a little bit. Um, and then obviously in the defence end, it's just about being aggressive and, and doing our jobs, but also, you know, working together is really important as well. So there, was, there had been a lot that we'd been working on. It sort of came together a little bit more um, as well. So that was good. And also up against a classy outfit like the Firebirds. On Simone McInnes, I mean, the oh, cam was really close up at, on her at the end of the game. Did she pull out that lawnmower move again? <laughs> I didn't get to see her if she... I was too busy looking at the group out on court, but looking back at the replay, I did see... I don't know what she was doing. I don't know if she got a lawnmower um, move in there, but she was doing something else. She's invented a new move. Um, the one-handed fist pump or, or whatever it was. So she was loving it. Um, it was really good. I did, see, I did see the song afterwards and the, there was a bit of uh, shoe banging again. Yeah, it's she, back. She never did that when it's I played. Back. It's really come into <laughs> play since I've retired. Hey, Em, what, what, what happens this week? You're still um, obviously in Queensland, as you touched on. What have the movements been like? Yeah, so we were in... Um, we're in Brizzy and then we've we've moved up to the sunny coast. Oh, here's Katie going, oh, did she hit her head on the roof there? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we've moved up to the sunny coast. Um, we're here till what we know is, is Sunday we play, which is exciting. And 
Um, yeah, obviously it's a little bit unpredictable for us at the moment, but we're just sort of rolling with it. The girls have been so good um, with just being adaptable and, and it's just the unknown for us. But the things that we do know is that we're able to play and we're able to play this Sunday against Thunderbirds up here, which is which is really good. So excited to be able to you know get some sunshine, although it's a bit cloudy out there today, um, and just enjoy being together as a group um, and seeing what happens. Does it feel a bit like deja vu, up being up there again and not really knowing what's about to happen next? It does a little bit, although last year obviously was a little bit different. When we sort of packed our bags, we knew that we'd be away for a pretty long time, you know, up to about nine weeks, I said. Um, I think they said at the start. And this time's a little bit different because obviously I don't even know what day it is. Last week when we left, <laughs> packed our bags. Not away, not day. away, it's fine. I'm so confused. <laughs> I thought we'd been away for about two and a half weeks, but it's only been one week. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we packed our bags on the Wednesday, um, left on the Wednesday afternoon, and then, you know, we thought we were coming home on the Sunday, and, and now it's this Sunday, so it's been, you know, a little bit longer. But I think this time's a little bit different because we just don't know how long we will be away for. Um, but look, we've just all got to go with it and, and help each other out and support each other as well, which, which, we, which we've all been doing, which is really good. Hey, Em, stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, before which Netball Victoria and Melbourne Vixens members can actually receive up to $1,500 off a new Nissan. All you need to do is visit nissan.com.au to find out more. Terms and conditions apply. Make every drive an experience with the Nissan X-Trail. Featuring Apple CarPlay and a host of handling features that will keep you on the straight and narrow. But let's get things back off track with Intelligent 4x4. Nissan. Experience X-Trail. And one of the most fascinating things, I think, for all of the Vixens fans out there is to get to know you a little bit more in your life away from netball a little bit more. And we've been seeing on your Instagram lately pictures of a new puppy that you have in your life. Can you talk to us about your little puppy? Look at Oh, that's him. such a cute photo. She doesn't look like that anymore. Oh, oh. cute. She's got, look at her little goatee. She's got like a little grey goatee. Is her her name's Indy? Why, yeah, this is Indy. Um, I think she's... Just over four months now, um, or like, you know, when kids, you know, when parents say about their kids, like, oh, she's like 17 weeks and it's like, no, <laughs> just four, four months. Let's go with that. Um, so, yeah, I think she's just about four, a bit over four months um, and she's so fun. She's um, very well trained uh, compared to Billy, that? Joe's dog. Yes, that's all me. Um, I'm a really good dog trainer. <laughs> but, yeah, she's very well behaved except she does get very excited with new people. Oh. Um, so if ever you see her, just step back a little bit because she will wee on your shoes. I'm sorry. So, okay, so uh -huh. it's a nice segue. So <laughs> the next question I was going to ask is, like, you know how they say that dogs are a lot like their owners? Mm -hmm. um, oh. <laughs> maybe not the whole weeing on the shoes thing. But, but I want to just draw your attention. Obviously, Joe has got... Um, Billy. Billy. And Kate Maloney has got, got a new addition. Like, yep. what... What does what do those dogs say about their personalities? Do you think? Well, Kate Maloney's dog's a little rat. So. <laughs> That's all I was looking for. All I was looking for. So that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Put that um, grab on the promo. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> a little rat. Oh gosh. And Joe's dog Billy um, is a unique character. Um, it doesn't like floorboards. And it doesn't like to turn corners, so <laughs> nothing wrong with her dog. That um, is great. a lot about Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing, Em, that I have learned about you over the years, but not many people would know, is that when you finish netball, you want to join the police force. Is that still the case? Yeah, I think so. Um, I just feel like it appeals to me and it would be, you know, every day is different and... Um, enjoy helping people and, and that sort of thing as well. So, yeah, I think I would be suited to, to that and, and would enjoy that as a job. But obviously at the moment with netball, it's pretty hard to do. Um, so it's sort of a wait and see kind of thing. I have met with Vic Police a few times and, and chatted through things and they were really keen, um, obviously, to get more women involved and there's not many women in the, the police force. So, yeah, that would be something that I would look forward to or look to do after netball. Can you so, imagine Maddox out on the beat? Unbelievable. <laughs> I love it. 
think which, it'd be which, really good. Which area would you want to be in? Yeah, there's so many different areas. I think when I met with them, um, I didn't realise how many different areas there are. Um, Detective. There's sort of, you know, that, that critical response team that you're out, like, you know, in the real serious situations. And, and then there's obviously um, search and rescue and, and things like that. So I think... Yeah, I'd have to, to wait and see, but I think, you know, those sort of two two fields would, would interest me a little bit. You know, Clint, if you're out in your speedo swimming and you needed some help, um, I could, could help you. <laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> it doesn't, trust me. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a mental cheapy no one. <laughs> um, I just want to straighten up a little bit um, and maybe as a police officer in waiting, uh, you can give us some good feedback on this. Um, Joe Harton um, of Giants Netball was subjected to some, some pretty rough taunts, some bullying online uh, during the week. Your reaction to that, M, um, as someone who's played a lot of netball with and against um, Joe, um, it's c clearly very, very unfair and unwarranted. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and we've actually spoken a little bit. My room is Kate Eddie, and we've actually had a bit of a discussion around this um, because it's a real tricky one. And I think, you know, as athletes, Bianca, you'd know um, that you there's not many other professions that you get judged on everything you do, whether it's your weight, your fitness, um, your performances out on court, you know, you get judged on a, a regular basis. And, um, you know, I really felt for Joe because... We just go out there and we try and do the best that we can every week. And you can see, you know, people make mistakes and athletes make mistakes every every day. Um, and for her to cop that um, is not okay. And, and you know, it's sort of a mixed feeling about whether she should have reposted that or, or not. And I think, you know, in this day and age, I think you just have to because otherwise, you know, how are, are people going to learn and and be able to, yeah. you know, change from that. And, you know, I'm not sure of exactly, you know, the the girl that posted her age or anything, and that gets a little bit tricky as well, obviously. With so many young people, obviously with netball, we have a, a really, um, you know, a young population that, that watch us, and, you know, that gets a little bit tricky as well. But I think calling it out, you just have to do it. And it's the same with, you know, obviously Naomi Osaka at the moment as well and things like that. It's... It's pretty sad to see that athletes are getting this sort of hate online and, um, yeah, I think we need to be able to learn and, and everyone needs to be able to learn and, you know, your parents say when you're growing up, if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all and obviously people are entitled to their opinion but that's not really an opinion, that's just being mean really. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we've all got to learn from this and, and look after one another really. Yeah, really I'm well sad. said. Um, for you personally, Em, have you ever had to deal with a situation like that? And do you have anything that you do where you were, you know, block and delete straight away, or what kind? How are you taught, I guess, to handle it within the club? I must say, I've actually been quite lucky. Um, first of all, I try not to read things. You know, if you've had a bad performance, you know in yourself that you've had a bad performance. You don't need to go and read other people's opinions that you've played terrible. Um, and that's why the coaching staff are there to obviously give you feedback and for you to learn and grow as a player um, and a, as a person. But for me, I just try and stay clear of reading it in the first place. I have made the mistake on an odd occasion to have a read, but to be, to be honest, I've actually been quite lucky. There's nothing to that extent like Joe's that I've received ever. Um, in my netball career and I actually don't know how I would respond if I did receive something like that. Um, I guess you've got to be in that situation yourself to see what you would do. But, yeah, I have been quite fortunate in that, but also try and steer clear as well. Thank thankfully, we only get good feedback for Vixens Live. I know. I know. Oh, That's good. Fan mail. <laughs> yeah. Keep it coming, guys. <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> now, stay with us, Em, because for all of our Vixens Live viewers tonight, we're giving you an exclusive. Use the code LIVE21 to receive 15% off store-wide. This offer ends tomorrow night, and Vixens members remember to log in to receive your extra 10%. Don't miss out. Head to our online store. This one is exclusive for you. You can get one of those hoodies, especially for winter now. It's been pretty, one pretty off, cold out actually. there. Um, em, let's talk more about the injury. Um, when will we see you back, do you think? What's the timeline? How's it looking? Um, what have I missed? I've missed a week, so we play. I'm not playing this weekend against the Thunderbirds, unfortunately, but the aim, I think, for me would be next weekend. I think I've got to get a follow-up x-ray just to make sure 
I think they use the term sticky, so the bone's oh. sticking back on um, oh. where it should be. So nice. I'll get a follow-up x-ray and, and hopefully next weekend um, is the plan. But who knows with me? I'm all <laughs> over the shop, so we'll see what happens. Now, we say that because M Mannix is known to have the most weirdest injuries. Yeah. It's not like, you know, a normal ankle or anything like that. She always has the most bizarre. What's been the most bizarre one so far, Em? Um, probably my pinky back in 2018. Um, I also had concussion in 2018. Um, but yeah, probably the pinky where I came out for one of those amazing intercepts, Bianca, <laughs> like you probably took a few of, um, against the Magpies. I taught and you how to do it, didn't I? You did. I did <laughs> learn straight from you. Um, and basically my pinky just obliterated on itself. So, I mean, that wasn't very fun. Um, Steve Hawkins, as you know, Bianca is a very well-renowned physio and our Vixen's physio and he um he said he hadn't seen that very often so you know just creating new things for him to see pretty much and, and what do you like as a spectator um I'm all right I like to be out there actually contributing I yeah. feel like my coaching abilities weren't that good I just feel like I'm always just hey, encouraging take credit. The girls take credit for I know that, I'll know. take I did, Cal, I did tell Katie to come out and take some of those intercepts and she took the match win, winning intercepts. So, I mean, See, that was inspired. I think that was me. Yeah, inspired. yeah. So I'm all right. I'd rather be out there though, obviously. All right. Well, for all our incredible Netball Victorian Vixens members, here is your chance, another chance to get $1,500 off a new Nissan. You'll be driving away in some new wheels and with some extra cash in your pocket, head to nissan.com.au for more. Of course, terms and conditions do apply. Make every drive an experience with the Nissan X-Trail. Featuring Apple CarPlay and a host of handling features that will keep you on the straight and narrow. But let's get things back off track with Intelligent 4x4. Nissan Experience X-Trail. So the Vixens are taking on the Thunderbirds on the sunny coast. It was meant to be in Melbourne, and I'm sure there's plenty of our Vixens fans who are hoping to be able to go there and watch. But, Em, when we, I guess, turn our attention now to the Thunderbirds, how have you been preparing as a team? And I feel like the Thunderbirds have been getting better and better every game. They might not necessarily be getting the wins on the board, but it's they've been getting closer, haven't they? Yeah, and I guess we had a little bit of a look at that against when they played Fever, and they really put it to them in that first quarter. And... You know, they probably just haven't had that consistency there to be able to come through and win the games. But we know that they will really want to come out hard and, and give it to us and, and beat us. But again, this week for us has really been focusing on what we've or what we want to do out there and fine tuning a few more of those things. But we know that it's not going to be an easy game for us. And we've really got to bring in again. Obviously, we had a good win last weekend, but we can't sort of, you know, go off that. We need to be improving each week. And that's hopefully what we will do this weekend against them. Yeah, momentum. It's a big thing in sport, isn't it? Especially in netball. We saw it last year, obviously, as you bound your way towards the grand final and ultimately a, a premiership, M. So building that momentum now would be would be a great thing. And, uh, I mean, is that something, you, you know, you talk about, the, the lift you can get from a win? Yeah, definitely. And it's always good to be away. Um, you know, obviously, we've been away nearly for a couple of weeks now and it's nice to to be able to go through the week after a win. Um, much better feeling within the group. So... I think for us, for the girls that are obviously new to the team, um, to be able to feel that and what it's like to win and and then go on from that and, and hopefully win a few more games from now on, I think, um, yeah, it's really good for the team morale and, and especially being away from home, you feel feel better about being away um, after a good win. So hopefully we go again this weekend. And that's a really important point that um, Em makes. And I want to ask you the same question, B, because you spend a whole lot of time away from home, you know, <laughs> be it Diamonds or, you know, World Cups and the like. Um, not saying that these girls aren't close, they're very, very close, but what do you get out of sort of a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a, an event like COVID that makes the Vixens have to up and leave going to camp. Does it bring you together and sort of bond the girls a bit more? I think you'll find you always hear a lot of netballers say how much they really enjoy away trips because mm. it's a chance to connect with your teammates. I mean, I've never had to experience anything like last year where there was so much unknown as to when you're actually coming home. But a lot of the players too, you know, they have a lot going on when they're at home. A lot of them have other jobs and they're running around dogs. everywhere. Yeah, they've got dogs to look after. <laughs> uh, so there's so much going on that that's probably the most peaceful part about going away is yeah. that you 
can actually just be a full-time athlete, concentrate on netball. And when you've got downtime, there's plenty of visual shopping, tanning. coffee, cafe times, tanning, exactly. Fake tanning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, not long left. Uh, last time we met the Thunderbirds. Um, how did we go? We won. Well, no, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. We, we did not. Lost. We did not. This was one of the last games last year uh, in the hub and I think it was a bit of a surprise because the Thunderbirds were certainly building momentum. They had young guns as players. I mean, we're seeing the highlights really of the Vixens at the moment. Uh, but okay. <laughs> the likes of Georgie Horges, we saw Pot Gita for the Thunderbirds really stand up. I mean, as you take an intercept over her then, Em. <laughs> oh, it might have been the last we had to have on our way to the... That's membership. right. What lessons did you learn from this game is probably what we should be asking. Yeah, I think they've got a pretty similar team. Obviously, their goaling end um, is the same. And um, we've speak, been speaking a little bit about that and um, and what they put out there. And obviously, a little bit unorthodox with Pop Geeta and, um, and that. So, I think, yeah, I feel like it's been so long ago. I don't even remember that game. It was the only... It was the, second game we lost for the year so we didn't lose many last year um but yeah I think we've been more focusing on us and and what we're able to put out there and we've got a bit of a new look team ourselves so really um you know focusing on that and, and the strengths of each individual and and what they they can put out there so that's probably been more of our focus on us than them um we don't need to worry about them we'll just put out what we need to do and the rest will follow absolutely sunday 5 45 telstra tv i believe that's right. memory make sure everybody you are watching the vixens go take on the thunderbirds hopefully another win and another momentum building yes. forward to win this premiership this year em definitely and i think you know we've got the one one win under our, our belt now and Full steam ahead for us and hopefully, um, yeah, a good game against the Thunderbirds will put us in good stead for the rest of the season. But for us, yeah, just focusing on this one and we'll, we'll worry about the rest later on. Em, lovely to see you. Um, happy healing. I'm glad those flowers I ordered arrived. I see they're just sitting <laughs> What's behind they? Yeah, Oh, that's are. so nice um, of you. I just thought, These you know. are from... No, Clint, don't claim it. Um, <laughs> these are from Netball Victoria because they are so lovely. lovely. They always send us things. They sent us things up in the hub last year and they've um, sent us some beautiful flowers. So mm. thank you, Netball Vic. Um, Where are our flowers? Uh, definitely brightening our day. I wonder if our flowers are on their way to help us get through lockdown. Mm. I got you mine. Think? Did you not get yours? <laughs> no, I didn't actually. <laughs> it's awkward, isn't it? I'll send you some. Oh, thanks, Em. I really appreciate that. Probably not, but it was a thought that counts. <laughs> hey, good luck. We'll see you soon, Em. Thanks for joining us, Thanks, em. guys. And thanks for having me. That was another episode of Vixens Live. Thanks again for joining us and we'll be back again next week. See ya.